This video is sponsored by PCB Way. This 3D printed round shaped object doesn't look really complicated, at least from the outside, but the inside happens a lot. This is turbine. It looks a bit like a jet engine compressor, but it's not completely opposite. The working principle of this type of turbine is actually really simple. First of all, there is a shaft. To the shaft are connected three rotors. Between the rotors are two stators. The rotors will rotate. Because they are connected to the shaft, the shaft will rotate also. The rotational movement can be used somewhere else, but we speak about this a bit later. Stators don't move. So what is the purpose of those? To understand this, we have to take a closer look to the stators and rotors plates. If you remove the outer wall and look from the top, it starts to make more sense. If for example the air flowed through the plates in this direction, two things happening. First of all, the air will push the plates and also because they are oil for shapes, it's create a lift. Those two forces make the rotors move. But after the rotor is stator. The air isn't moving like it did before, at the straight line. Now the air is moving on a slight angle. This would not be a problem if there is not another rotor behind that the same air has to rotate again. If there isn't a stator, it would do the opposite. So we need a stator to redirect the air. If you look at those plates, it's pretty simple to understand how it toasted. And then the same process repeats itself. Now we know how this 3D printed turbine works. Next, it's time to print all necessary parts and start building. For rotors and stators, I use my super fast Bamboo Lab X1. They are printed with quite a strong printing settings. The wall thickness is 5 layers. I wanted those plates to be completely solid, but I didn't want to print with 100% of infill because the middle section don't have to be solid, it's just a waste of material. Housing and leads I printed with my Creality Ender 3 S1 Pro, and I use PLA for all 3D printed parts in this video. Everything is over here. Leads, housing, 3 rotors and 2 stators. Now it's time to assemble. By the way, it's really easy, but just saying the designing was not. But first thing is to sandwich those rotors and stators. It's like Big Mac. The rotors are buns and the stators are beef. To attach the bottom and middle rotor together, I use 3 M4 bolts. And exactly the same way I attach the next rotor. Next, I had to get 8mm shaft through the rotors. This was not the easiest task. It was not planned. So I had to use hammer. I didn't know the fit is so tight. Originally, I planned to secure the rotors to the shaft with square nuts and set screws. But now they are just not needed. The most important thing to keep in mind is the order of the stator. You see, on the sides are little extrusions. One has four and other has five. It's really important that the four extrusion stator goes between third and second rotor. Otherwise, it will just not fit in the housing. And if you're wondering what those things are, actually they solve two greatest problems of the design. First of all, it stops them rotating. Stators have to be stationary like we already know. And second, it fixes the clearances between stators and rotors. Now when the Big Mac is done, we can place this into the housing. And it fits there perfectly. And then I add 8mm bearings to the both of those leads and screw those to the rest of the turbine. And the turbine is done. Thank you for watching. By the way, everything is not ready, just the turbine. Also intake is needed and maybe something behind, for example stepper motor, to produce some electricity. Let's not get ahead. Right now I have a little problem. When I spin the turbine, it does some clicking noise. It cannot be anything else than the rotors touching housing or stators. I tried to solve this problem by spinning the turbine with my power drill for a couple of minutes, to wear this in whatever is causing this. This method helped, but not enough, so I took it apart and noticed those spots. 3D printing, you know, on the corners there are little extra material. Anyway, I sand those down a bit. It's still there, but it doesn't really stop the turbine as much as it did before, so it's fine enough. For now, I need to know, does this turbine even work? And if so, how well? So I need compressed air right now, but over here, where I record the video, aka my home, I don't have a compressor. So I had to drive the location where I have the compressor and I give it a go. And for my surprise... It works really well. Honestly speaking, I expect way worse result. I added one blue rotor behind to visualize the speed of the rotation, but the sound tells more. This test was just to see does it even work. 
I didn't expect this type of result and sadly I didn't took the RPM reader, however it was called, with me and I didn't know how fast this exactly spins. But the video is not over and we will test this again. Big thanks to PCB Wave for sponsoring this video. The transparent turbine housing that you have seen in the video, I didn't print this by myself. It's printed from PCB Way. Just look at it, it's absolutely amazing. You probably know PCB Way as making custom PCBs. Yes, it's true, but did you also know they do way more than just PCBs? They also do 3D printing, CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, and even insection molding. Speaking about 3D printing, I mean you can order even metal. I have ordered from PCB Way many, many times, and they have done absolutely amazing job every single time. So if you need something but you don't have right machines or skills, use PCB Way. PCB Way is your one-stop solution. So let's continue. First intake. Of course, I don't keep this so unprofessional. Turbine front lead has six holes. My original idea was to connect tubes to the lead and to the other end, this type of thing which separates the stream of the air equally to all six tubes. This was a terrible idea for many reasons and I scrapped it. Anyway, I didn't get it together and one guy stopped me from doing it. So I came up with a way better idea. No tubes this time. In the lead itself are shapes that guides the air all over the turbine. This one was my first redesign and I don't have really big hopes on this one because I did some design flaws. But the second one is way simpler and probably the best one. Anyway, it's time to test this again. First with the grey lead. I'm also going to read RPM this time. First, I didn't got any readings, so I had to turn off the lights. The reading is around 5000 RPMs. The turbine with grey lead works pretty well, but I also test the yellow lead. This one didn't work as well as the previous one. With this one, the RPM was around 1500. There is one difference more. On the dip, I epoxy glued the connector. It helps me to get air directly from the compressor. Simply speaking, I will get more air, which in this case mean more power than I can get with the air pistol. And yeah, the RPM is a bit higher, but still, grey lead was better. So far, I have done only dry tests. Now I connected one stepper motor to the turbine shaft, which in this case is generator. And I'm going to test, does it have enough torque to spin the motor? And sorry, I didn't add shorter M3 bolts. Turbine has no problem to handle the NEMA 17 stepper motor, but I believe a lot of my viewers wanna comment that there is no load on the motor. Yes, so I connected one 12 volt LED plug to the motor. Between is obviously full breeze rectifier that transforms AC to DC current. So far everything has been working better than planned, but there is something I wanna try more. This type of turbine isn't designed for water or any type of liquid. Still I connected my garden hose to my transparent turbine and I give it a go. I 
I did believe that the turbine still spins at really low rate, but it turns out it didn't spin at all. There is nothing unexpected, but still I had to try it. And it's kinda cool to see how the water moves inside the turbine. I believe it's cooler if the turbine actually spins. But anyway, this is the end of the video. If you did like the video, then I believe you will like my past and upcoming videos. So maybe consider subscribing. Anyway, big thanks for watching and see you guys really soon. Bye.